Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem ICFR01. This one is going to test your knowledge of internal controls. So here we go. We've got six different scenarios. In each of these scenarios, an internal control has failed. It's up to you to figure out what type of internal control has failed. So take a moment, pause the video, see if you can figure it out when you're ready. Come on back and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So A, this is actually one of the easier ones. Someone accidentally left the warehouse lock unlatched when going home for the day. This is a failure in your physical controls. The lock on the warehouse is a physical impediment to getting into the warehouse and potentially stealing whatever's in it. All right, B, two cashiers shared a cash register when one register broke down. Now, this is a tough one because we have two types of controls that are very similar. But this one right here is a failure in establishment of responsibility. And I'm going to scoot that up because I didn't make these lines long enough, did I? Responsibility. All right. What's happening here is you have a cash register. That cash register should be assigned to a single person who is responsible for the transactions that occur on it and the money within it. So that is a, 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 an establishment of responsibility over the register. The moment you let a second person join in on that register, now neither party can be held fully responsible because they can always point fingers at the other one. All right, that brings us to C. A company neglected to save its sales register receipts for the past year. That is a failure in our documentation controls. Documentation controls provide records that can help verify transactions. D. A manager allowed his assistant to skip her vacation this year because she had too much work to do. That is a failure in our human resource controls. It doesn't seem like it, but vacation is a type of control. Vacation forces you to step away from your duty, let someone else fill the role temporarily, and while that someone else is filling the role, if the original duty holder is doing anything wrong, it might come to light. All right, E. At the end of a long shift, a shift manager asked a cashier to count his own cash drawer while the manager handled other closing duties. This is a failure in independent internal verification. Internal verification. What should have happened here is that the shift manager counts the drawer while the um, uh, 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 cashier watches, or the cashier counts the drawer while the shift manager is watching. But basically, one of them should count, and the other should verify the count separately to make sure that they are both in agreement with what's in there, okay? And that brings us to F. The receiving clerk responsible for unpacking newly arrived inventory is also responsible for periodically updating the inventory balance. This is the one that usually gets confused with what we did in B, establishment of responsibility. This is segregation of duties failure. The reason this is a segregation of duties failure is because the, the, the activities of unpacking the inventory or physically handling it, as well as updating the balance, or um, in this case, um, record keeping, the combination of those two duties creates an opportunity for fraud. This receiving clerk could simply put some of that new inventory in their car and never put that inventory into the system, and no one would be the wiser for it. So this is a segregation of duties problem. The receiving clerk should do the unpacking. Someone else should do the record keeping. That way, the opportunity to simply steal some of the inventory does not exist. All right, so there you have it. That's it for your test of internal control knowledge. Hopefully you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.